Hi, my name's Vince Sheehan, and today I'd like to talk about Beethoven's Sixth Symphony, the Pastoral Symphony, Opus 68. And I'd like to talk about um, the structure and the form of this famous symphony, because I do believe that having some understanding of the way music's put together can greatly aid our appreciation and enjoyment of it. That's why I do these videos. The Beethoven Sixth Symphony was composed simultaneously with the incredibly famous Fifth Symphony um, between 1802, that's when the first sketches uh, were found in Beethoven's notebook, but the, the, the majority of the work was probably between 1807 and 1808. And in December of 1808, both the Fifth and the Sixth, as well as other pieces, were premiered in this very famous uh, concert in the Theater an der Wien, um, of course in Vienna, on a freezing cold December day. The orchestra was uh, incredibly under-rehearsed and it was probably a real trial, to be honest, to sit through <laughs> that four-hour concert in that, in that freezing um, temperature. But nevertheless, it was a concert full of premieres of Beethoven masterpieces and the Fifth Symphony and the Sixth Symphony, the Pastoral, were uh, premiered in that concert. Uh, indeed, they got the numbers the wrong way round in the programme. Um, the Fifth was labelled as the Pastoral and the, the Sixth as the, as the da, 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 that symphony, but never mind. Um, and of course, uh, the Sixth Symphony is incredibly famous as well, as, as well as the Fifth Symphony, perhaps not quite as well known, but you know, people have known it from countless films and, um, t you know, you might have seen Fantasia, the Disney film, etc. The whole symphony is in that. And it's really Beethoven um, doing something different from his other symphonies. Um, the Fifth Symphony, of, of course, is incredibly concise uh, and there's a kind of thrust to the symphony. There's, a, there's very much a progression from darkness to light in that symphony. Um, in the Sixth, there isn't really that uh, trajectory. It's more a case of Beethoven simply looking around in the countryside. He loved his countryside walks around Vienna. and. Uh, really trying to express his impressions as he walked around. Beethoven was at pains to uh, explain that he wasn't painting the countryside accurately. It's more of his impressions as he walked around. That's what he's trying to conjure up in the Sixth Symphony. And indeed, recently it's been suggested that Beethoven was actually inspired by an earlier symphony by a composer called Heinrich Connect who um, composed uh, a symphony describing um, similar things to the Pastoral Symphony. A storm, um, a shepherd's song, um, bird song, etc. And it seems that Beethoven took this as a kind of inspiration, although he didn't uh, want to paint things quite as literally as Connect did in his symphony. Um, and of course, painting the countryside, birdsong goes back uh, many centuries. You know, you might even, you know, a piece like Vivaldi's Four Seasons, for instance, does that, doesn't it? So here's Beethoven, his effort to bring the countryside, uh, his beloved countryside, into the, the concert hall and to somehow give, share his gratitude I think, to God. Um, there's, a very, there's a real spirituality in this music, particularly in the final movement. Um, Beethoven shown his gratitude for uh, the delights he finds in the countryside. Um, the symphony begins in a rather leisurely way. We have um, a first movement, which he's uh, subtitled, Awakening of Cheerful Feelings. On arrival in the countryside um, and we have the first subject that this, this first opening movement is in sonata form and the first subject is this very delightful um, amiable melody we have a drone 
that kind of very folky sound, isn't it? And we have this. Eventually, we hear these birds as well in the flutes. Listen out for the birds. And then we have the transition. We have here this kind of rhythm in the clarinets first, I think it is. Now we have the second subject in the dominant. And the second subject really has three ideas um, played almost simultaneously. We have this idea. And so on. Then underneath that we have this idea. And we have these trill ideas above that as well. Um, and then we have this idea in the second subject group as well. And that brings um, the second subject group to a, a close. And we have a codetta, which goes like this. That's going to come back uh, in the coda as well, so remember that tune. Then the development. And the development for this movement is not stormy, you know, like you think of the Fifth Symphony, for instance. This is altogether more gentle and more actually rather wonderful. Um, it's very static. Um, this kind of music which just goes round and round in circles in a way. Um, remember the first subject. We have this. Remember that tune? Well, part of that tune, this. Da, 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 that forms the bulk of the development, that small um, cell, that motif. Um, and we have this marvellous moment in the development where we just hear that over and over again, over a kind of a pedal point, B flat. Um, that change there, we go from B flat to D major. Uh, it's this kind of rather wonderful um, modulation there. It's kind of a mediant relationship. Um, it it's so evocative of like kind of the shifting in light, I think, of the countryside. I was in, on holiday in the Yorkshire Dales very recently and I just remember looking at the, the kind of the hills in the distance and all of a sudden the, uh, the sun kind of breaks through the clouds and adds a new perspective. And it's very much like that, I think, with this music. B flat. There's a rather beautiful change there. Um, interspersed between these sequences, we have um, kind of references to the first subject proper. Um, and then we have a minor passage near the end and we finally get to the recapitulation. We go back to that first subject again. And uh, like in the recapitulation of the first movement of the fifth symphony, where we have that delightful oboe solo, um, Beethoven does a similar thing in the sixth. We have... Um, And so on. It's a really beautiful way to go back into the recapitulation, slightly varied. We have the transition, transition the second subject, the codetta, and then we have um, the coda, which it begins quite developmentally. We hear a kind of a strong statement of the first subject in the cellos, I think it is, and then we have that variation on the codetta theme, this time in triplets. And then the 
movement ends very quietly after the first subjects restated finally and we hear these very quiet chords. The, sec the second movement is entitled by the brook and here Beethoven is really doing some um, painting uh, of what's around him. Um, again this movement's in sonata form, a very glorious beautiful movement. The real space and tranquility in this music. Um, Beethoven conjures up the brook by the, the accompaniment, actually. We have this idea in, uh, in the strings. Very beautiful melody, very relaxed. And then a second idea as well, a uh, rather lyrical idea. Then we eventually get to the transition which has this, uh, this kind of more slightly militaristic feel to it. And then that carries on back to the first uh, subject, kind of been uh, bringing the modulation round to the second subject, which is a rather beautiful idea on a bassoon, which goes like this. have um, a codetta based on the first subject. The development starts in a very static way again, very relaxed way, but eventually we hear this new theme. So on. And then eventually um, we hear lots of the first subject in uh, various keys. The, the subject, the melody which uh, conjures up the brook. And then we eventually get to the recapitulation where the first subject is uh, truncated. We have a different transition this time. The second subject, the codetta. And then we have the very famous coda where Beethoven is... Um, really painting the sounds of the birds around him. He even lists them. We have the, um, the nightingale, the quail and the cuckoo. We hear this on the flute. Um, yeah, a very beautiful way in, uh, really such an evocative way to end this beautiful movement. The third movement is entitled The Merry Gathering of Country Folk and it's a rather charming um, dance scherzo movement in this symphony. It's based on three um, dances really. We begin with this idea which goes like this which we call A. What's interesting about that is we have two, um, again, two keys. We have this median relationship. The first bit, that's in F. Then D major. It's a of a kind of lifts the music. It's quite unusual and it um, perhaps recalls subconsciously that development, those change in chords in a development of the first movement. The B section, the beat, the next dance, um, is rather charming. It's said to be uh, Beethoven having a joke about the quality of um, kind of folk musicians in the taverns he uh, probably frequented. And uh, this oboe melody comes in, it's said a beat late, kind of representing the kind of musicianship. Um, it goes like this. And 
and so on. And then that brings us to the third dance. The meter changes into 2-4 and we have this rather rousing thigh slapping dance. <laughs> And so on. Um, and then the whole three dances are repeated before we have a variation on that first dance which takes us into the fourth movement. Attacker straight through into the fourth move which is Beethoven's famous depiction of a storm. And um, this movement really some say kind of acts as an introduction um, into the fifth and final movement. Um, I'd more say it's something perhaps to be taken in its own right. You know, Beethoven did label it as a discrete movement section. It's a wonderful depiction of a storm, probably the best, I think, out of all of them. Um, we have um, the, the kind of the raindrops beginning to fall first. so on right at the very beginning very quietly and then the storm of course breaks forth in all its fury you know da 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 we have the, the thunder and lightning dum lum dum lum dum da 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 we hear the piccolo coming into texture the very high notes uh conjuring up the kind of whistling of the wind uh, a really tremendous, exciting uh, movement, very short, which then brings us into the fifth and final movement of the symphony. Again, attacker, we go straight in. After a brief introduction, we hear the shepherd's song, the cheerful and thankful feelings after the storm. And this uh, movement really is in a rondo or a sonata rondo form. Um, we have a brief introduction and we have this uh, idea. So on. Very beautiful but very simple tune representing the pipes of the shepherd. Then the B section, we have this idea. And so on. Eventually brings us to these uh, kind of descending arpeggio-like figures. And we hear a brief snatch of the, the shepherd's tune again. We're back to the A section again. The C section, we have a new theme, which goes like this on the clarinet. And then eventually we go back to A, where we have a more florid version of that shepherd song. We have B again, da 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 da, in the tonic, and we end with quite a lengthy, substantial coda to this movement. Um, it starts as if we're going to develop that shepherd's um, pipe music more, and but then we reach these kind of radiant heavenly heights in this music. It really brings forth Beethoven's spirituality, I think, in this music. This sheer gratitude, I think, uh, to God for the created world. And we have this wonderfully sublime, peaceful ending to this marvellous symphony. I've put the bar numbers and the structure uh, in a clear way in the description underneath. Um, please like and subscribe if this is your kind of thing and uh, if you've got any more suggestions for pieces you want me to look at please put them in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Bye.